In the first episode of our series dedicated to the most modern main battle tanks, we presented the Russian T-14 Armata, the French Leclerc, and the German Leopard 2A7. In this second episode, let's have a look on the Chinese Type 99, the Iranian Karar, and the American M1A2C Abrams. The ZTZ-99, also known as Type 99, is manufactured by Norinco. It's the most advanced main battle tank fielded by the Chinese army. It entered service in late 2001. The Type 99 was initially produced in a small number, less than 200, due to its high unit price, about $1.9 million in 99. The technology developed for the Type 99 was then used to upgrade the less expensive Type 96. The main armament consists of the 125mm smooth bore gun. The turret is fitted with a carousel automatic loader. A total of 41 rounds are carried in the tank, of which 22 are stored in the carousel, thus ready to be loaded in the gun. The cannon can fire, namely high explosive fragmentation rounds and a new armor piercing fin stabilized discarding sabot round, as well as a laser guided missile similar to the Russian made Reflex anti tank guided missile, which has a maximum firing range of 5,000 meters. According to some military sources, the Russian missile is also manufactured in China under license. The missile is fitted with a high explosive anti tank warhead that is claimed to penetrate up to 700 mm of conventional steel armor. More recently, an improved tandem heat warhead has been developed by Russia to defeat tanks protected by explosive reactive armor. A total of four missiles are normally carried in the tank. The secondary armament includes a 7.62 mm coax shell machine gun mounted on the right side of the main gun and a 12.7 mm heavy machine gun mounted on the commander's cupola. Five smoke grenade launchers are fitted on each side at the front of the turret. The tank benefits from a composite armor over the front and the hull and turret to provide a higher level of protection against anti-tank guided missiles and rockets. The tank has a new explosive reactive armor able to defeat the new generation of tandem warhead of anti-tank missiles. The Type 99 is motorized with a turbocharged diesel engine developing 1500 horsepower, coupled to a manual transmission offering seven forward and one reverse gears. The standard occupant includes an MBC protection system, fire detection and suppression system, a GPS and a snorkel, enabling the tank to cross a water fords four meter and a half deep. The Type 99, also called Type 99A2, or ZTZ-99A is an improved version of the Type 99 male battle tank. The first prototype of the Type 99A was tested in 2007. The tank was unveiled in September 2015 during a military parade in Beijing. It has been used previously by the Chinese army during the Shanghai Cooperation Organization military exercise in 2014. It's a third generation main battle tank and the most modern tank in service with the Chinese armed forces. The third generation indicates the capacity of hunter-killer capability using a commander independent site. The armament of the Type 99A is identical to its predecessor's one, but its protection has been improved. Furthermore, the Type 99A is fitted with a wire control system that includes the latest generation of thermal sites, a new ballistic computer and meteor mast sensors. The commander has a stabilized 360 degree day and night panoramic sight that also includes a laser range finder mounted at the front of his position. The gunner has a roof mounted stabilized day and night sight that includes a laser range finder. An infrared jammer enables the tank to jam anti tank guided missiles such as Western Hot, Tau, and Milan. A laser jamming device is mounted on the turret roof at the back of the gunner's hatch that can be operated by the commander or the gunner to neutralize hostile optics and blind an enemy gunner or an attack helicopter or drone. The Karar, striker in English, 
is a main battle tank fully developed and designed by the Iranian defense industry. This tank was publicly unveiled in August 2016, showing it during trials in the desert. In March 2017, Iranian Defense Minister Brigadier General Hossein Degan inaugurated its production line at the Bani Hashem Amor Industrial Complex in Dorut County. According to military experts, the Kara is based on the chassis of the Soviet-made T-72, but fitted with a new turret. The design of the tank seems to be very similar to the Russian-made T-90MS. According to the retired Major General Vladimir Bogatyrev, the Kara is even a copy of the Russian-made T-90MS, the most advanced modification of the T-90 family but it uses some features of the M1 Abrams and the British Challenger too. Russian military experts suggested that, in terms of certain military capabilities, the Kara is nevertheless unlikely to match the original Russian T-90. The Kara is armed with a 125mm smooth port gun that can fire all standard ammunition like the armor piercing fin stabilized discarding sabot, high-explosive anti-tank and high-explosive fragmentation, as well as anti-tank guided missiles. The turret is equipped with a carousel automatic loader. The secondary armament includes a remotely operated weapon station and with a 7.62mm machine gun mounted at the rear of the commander's hatch. It includes a day and night sight, a thermal imager and a laser rangefinder. The Kara is protected with the new armor package with explosive reactive armor which gives protection against chemical energy and kinetic energy projectiles. The roof of the turret is protected with additional armor and each side is fitted with spaced composite armor modules. To increase the protection against RPG threats, the rear part of the turret and the hull are covered by wire cage armor. To increase the operational range of the tank, two 200-liter diesel fuel drums can be added at the rear of the hull. Standard equipment of the Kara MBT includes an MBC protection system, night vision equipment for all three crew members, electro-optical fire control system, laser rangefinder and ballistic computer. The crew members have digital control panels and a new battlefield management system to enhance the combat effectiveness by integrated digital battle maps, situational awareness, communications and sensor systems. The Kara is equipped with a new independent site for the tank commander. The gunner has a day and night and thermal imaging fire control system that can be used during both day and night. A camera is mounted to the left of the driver's position. On the top rear of the turret, there is also a meteorological mast, including sensors that automatically transmit to the fire control system the data about wind speed and wind direction, air temperature and atmospheric pressure. The M1A2C Abrams, previously designated M1A2 SCP V3, SCP stands for System Enhanced Package, is a modernized version of the SCP V2. It benefits from a number of upgrades in the areas of survivability, maintainability, full efficiency, and network capability. In October 2015, the M1A2 SCP V3 was presented for the first time at AUSA Defense Exhibition in Washington, D.C. General Dynamics Land Systems expected to complete the prototype trial by spring 2015 and then receive a positive answer from the U.S. Army to start the production. The M1A2C's improvement in lethality derived from the combination of developmental upgrades and the addition of mature technologies that include the ammunition data link, improved 120mm ammunition, improved forward-looking infrared and a low-profile, common remotely operated weapon system. It's easy to recognize the M1A2C from earlier versions because at the rear left there is a small exhaust for the new Under Armour generator. The tank commander's situational awareness has been improved. The low-profile, remotely-operated weapon station significantly lowers the profile of the device. 
Also, LP Crows is equipped with an upgraded day camera that uses picture-in-picture technology. It offers a 340% larger scene in the wide field of view. The armament of the M1A2C is a 120mm smoothbore cannon. It can fire the M829A4 5th generation kinetic energy anti-tank round. This new round provides heavy armor defeat capability at extended range. It uses a depleted uranium penetrator and anti-armor design advancements to defeat threats targets equipped with advanced explosive reactive armor and APS active protection systems. The advanced multipurpose AMP round is a line of sight munition with three modes of operation, point detonate, delay, and air bursts. This essential capability required in urban environments allows the tank crew to defeat anti-tank guided missiles at range of 50 to 2,000 meters. The tank is also fitted with the ammunition data link to provide communication with the fire control system. The secondary armament includes a coaxial 7.62mm M240 machine gun mounted to the right of the main gun. A similar weapon is mounted on the left side of the turret of, for the loader can be elevated from minus 30 to 65 degrees with a 265 degrees azimuth. The loader hatch is now protected by armor plates on 360 degrees. The M1A2 SEPV-3 or M1A2C is motorized with a Honeywell AGT-1500 gas turbine engine. One of the major changes for fuel efficiency of the M1A2C is the under armor generator power unit, which allows the turret to be operated when running a small generator in place to use the main engine to save lots of fuel when the vehicle is not moving. The M1A2C is equipped with the new improved IED electronic warfare capability. It's fitted with an improved forward-looking infrared system to better identify a target. The iFLIR uses long and mid-wave infrared technology in both the gunner's primary sight and the commander's independent thermal viewer. The iFLIR provides four fields of view displayed on high-definition displays, greatly improving target acquisitions, identification and engagement times under all conditions, including FOD and obscurance. Soldiers of 3rd Battalion, 8th Cavalry Regiment, 3rd Armored Brigade Combat Team, 1st Cavalry Division stationed at Fort Hood, Texas, were the first to receive this newest version of the M1 Abrams on the 20th of July 2020. This is it for the second episode. The third episode of our series dedicated to the most modern main battle tanks will be focused on the Turkish Altai, the Israeli Merkava, and the modernized Challenger 2.